a beloved mother of four and high school teacher. All of her students loved her, every single one of them. Plus a very special person. I always wanted to be more like her. Is found murdered, her body dumped miles from home. As I got closer, you could see the outline of the body. I've seen quite a few homicides, and this one was very brutal. It felt very personal. Investigators try to piece together a mysterious crime. Law enforcement believed there was a violent struggle within the bedroom. He said that he did not hear this vicious attack that was taking place within feet of where he was sleeping. How could you not hear what was going on? Until the case takes a jaw-dropping turn. He was crying. He was emotional and said that he had a gun to his head. And leads to a killer no one suspected. I can't even fathom what goes through someone's mind when they do something like this. It was disturbing, very disturbing. Olney, Texas. A tiny rural town with a proud history in aviation. Olney, Texas was the home of air tractor. Crop dusting aircraft, they built them there. It's a very small town, very close knit. Pretty much everybody knows everyone. It's an open door community. Doors are unlocked, people are very welcoming. On a warm summer morning in 2019, a terrible discovery shakes residents to their core. The Young County Sheriff's Office received a call of a missing person, and the Olney Police Department was dispatched to the call. Just before 10 a.m., officers arrived to find homeowner Peter Allen and his two children, Kiara and Darian. Peter tells police he's worried something terrible has happened to his wife, 49-year-old high school teacher, Manu Allen. Peter told me that his wife was missing and that he had found a large amount of blood in their bedroom. And Peter told me that his wife's vehicle was gone. Investigators head to the bedroom and are shocked at what they find. As I got to the hallway, we started seeing signs of blood on the walls, uh, most notably what looked like a handprint. And as we started going into the bedroom, we noticed there was a large pool of blood at the end of the bed and the knife on the floor. One of the things that we also noted in the bedroom is that there were no sheets on the bed, which seemed odd. There was blood splatter across the furniture, the mattress, the closet doors. And as we proceeded into the garage, you could clearly see drag marks. As we were in the kitchen, we did see what appeared to be a footprint. Uh, a picture started to develop that something very bad had happened. As forensics begin processing the scene, police notify the DA's office. My uh, assistant district attorney, Philip Gregory, and I went out to the crime scene. The carpets were pretty much soaked in blood. There was a lot of uh, cast off blood on the walls and on the doors, and it was a, it was a horrific scene to see. With that amount of blood, we were concerned that you're probably dealing with somebody who is, is deceased if they had not already made it to a hospital. With no sign of the missing woman, investigators asked the family for more information about Manu Allen. My mom was from a little village in southern Germany. She had uh, eight siblings. In the middle of my mom's college, career, she came over um, to America to learn the language better. And my dad had seen her walk by, and my dad was like, ooh, who's that? <laughs> and while she was in America that summer, they spent, like, every day together. Manu married U.S. Army veteran Peter Allen in 1996, and soon after, the couple moved to Kroll, Texas. I came to know Peter and Manu when I was appointed police chief in Kroll, Texas, and Peter and I became good friends, and there was never no doubt uh, that Peter and Manu loved each other very much. Manu and Peter eventually settled in the small town of Olney with their four children. My mom was a very supportive woman, but she was always pushing us to do our best. 
Manu is one of the most respected teachers at Olney High School, teaching English and German. All of her students loved her, every single one of them. And my mom, she'd always be one to joke with the kids. Even my friends, she would help them if they needed help with their homework after school. Now, the loving wife and mother has gone missing. Police asked Peter Allen the last time he saw Manu. The night before, he and his wife sat down on the couch, watched TV, and then he went to sleep on the couch, and she retired to the bedroom to go to sleep. Peter claims that no one noticed any sign of trouble until the morning. So according to Mr. Allen, his daughter, Kiara, had woke up. I believe that she needed to get some laundry done when the laundry room is through the parents' room. Um, she noticed that there was some blood in the hallway area and concerned about her mother. Um, she went and woke up Mr. Allen on the couch. At that point, according to Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen went with her to investigate. He said that when he saw the knife, he drew the conclusion that she may have just been injured and cut. But clearly seeing the scene, a cut would not have produced the amount of blood, and it was very apparent that somebody was either severely injured or deceased. Peter tells officers that he and Kiara went to the local hospital to look for Manu. It did seem that it was out of place the way that Peter went to the hospital first uh, before calling law enforcement. There seemed to be a lack of emotion. He was very calm. So I pulled Officer Clark aside and I I advised him, I said, we need to be very careful how we talk and handle Mr. Allen because he's potentially involved. Law enforcement believed there was a violent struggle within the bedroom. Mr. Allen was arguably within feet of the actual act occurring. There were two children that were inside the house too. And investigators were concerned that, hey, uh, how could you not hear what was going on? Peter and his two children are brought to the police station for further questioning. Meanwhile, officers are dispatched to nearby parks and wooded areas to look for Manu's car, a white SUV. In the morning, a neighboring county deputy, Wilk, from Archer County arrived, and uh, he knows the Allens. My oldest son, Wyatt, she was his teacher, and he thought the world of her. When I came through town on Main Street, I saw crime scene tape up around the Allens' house. And in only you don't see crime scene tape up around houses that often. As a typical law enforcement officer, he says, hey, what can I do to help? I was asked to go out to Lake Cooper, look for a white SUV. I was given the license plate number. And when I pull into Lake Cooper and I go around to where the boat ramp is, I could see a white SUV on the other side of the lake where the dam is. So I got out, started looking at the vehicle and activate my body worn camera take photos of the car and I had noticed some brown smears on the car and I thought this looks like dried blood so after I had photographed the car and the area around the car I started looking around so I took off walking towards the fence line I looked to my left and I could see a pile of clothes or blankets and as I got closer you could see the kind of the outline of the body wrapped up in these sh sheets and blankets I felt the body, it was cold to the touch, rigor had set in. I had my body camera going, and I think on my video camera you can hear me take a, a deep sigh <sighs> because I know that the Allens are gonna get notified that their mother has been killed. We received a phone call from Mr. Wilk. I got a dead body out here at Lake Cooper. Uh, that he had located the vehicle in a body. Um, we have a whole crime scene back there at the, the house. When we first arrived at the lake, you could see a outline of a white sheet um, over by the fence line. Police confirm the deceased woman is Manu Allen. Miss Allen had been stabbed multiple times, and a lot of stab wounds were to the head. I've seen quite a few homicides, and this one was very brutal due to the amount of violence that was involved and the care taken in the way that she was moved and, and placed at the lake. It felt very personal. That started leading us to believe that it was somebody that knew her. Coming up, 
Suspicion falls close to home. She had picked up the knife that was in the bedroom. He said he heard something in the middle of the night. Causing rumors to swirl through a small town. Everybody knows everybody. A lot of accusations started going around. I said, I need you to look me in the face and tell me, did you have anything to do with this? And investigators uncover new clues. It was a communist block pistol, and it was semi-automatic. Until a stunning admission leaves a family devastated. It was just a shock that he confessed. It was a nightmare. The body of missing teacher and mother of four, Manu Allen, has just been located at Lake Cooper, a recreational area a few miles from her home in Olney, Texas. I'd been to homicide scenes before, but when you find somebody that you knew and your kids knew, when I did go home and told my kids that, hey, I was your teacher that was killed, that was hard. Olney, Texas is the small community where you don't expect this sort of violence at all. There had not been a murder there in the last 10 years. As they continue their investigation, detectives examine several items of evidence, trying to piece together what happened. The vehicle had turned down a little offshoot. It was approximately 20 feet from the road, and whoever was driving the vehicle had tried to turn the vehicle around and got high centered. Police believe that after the SUV got stuck, Manu's body was removed from the car. The body was found within sight of the vehicle, and there had been yucca leaves placed around the facial area. If you have a body where the eyes or the face are covered, it typically means that the person who has been involved in the death somehow knew this individual. When a killer does this type of behavior, it's because they're trying to show some sense of respect to the deceased. Forensics process the body and collect fingerprint evidence from Manu's vehicle. There were fingerprints that were located on the car that were in blood. When you find these, it's the you can say the golden ticket uh, for law enforcement uh, because whoever was involved in this left their signature behind. Another detail in the field grabs detectives' attention. There was a bicycle track that was leaving from the area of the vehicle onto the main road. Is it possible the killer had perhaps left on a bicycle? It being a recreational area, there is the potential that it could have been just a person riding through the area, but you're going to collect as much information as you can. Investigators catch a break when they find a witness who supports their discovery. There was an oil field worker that worked on the road that comes right out from the lake heading into Olney, and he happened to see very early in the morning someone on a bicycle wearing dark clothes with a backpack heading towards Olney from the lake area. While officers are dispatched to track down the cyclist, detectives inform Peter that his wife's body has been found and closely watch his response. Mr. Allen, his emotional reaction uh, was a little different than what you would expect. Mr. Allen was extremely detached, emotionless. He said that, you know, he wanted to get justice for Manuela and that he had multiple firearms and a lot of ammunition that he could bring to bear if he did figure out who had done this and that he was going to do what the military had taught him to do. As a law enforcement officer, I get mixed messages from that. When you start saying that you're going to go after whoever did it, you have to wonder if he's trying to point the investigation in a different direction than on him. Based on the crime scene, Detectives believe that Manu was killed in her bedroom and removed from the home in the early morning hours. They want to know how this could have happened with Peter in the next room. Mr. Allen said that he had been drinking vodka, and then typically, if Mr. Allen had been drinking, he would not sleep in the same bed as Miss Allen. 
Mr. Allen said that it was common for him to sleep on the couch because he snored a lot. Peter claims the only time he woke up was around dawn when he thought he heard his wife's car starting. He heard it and he didn't think anything of it. Mr. Allen indicated that it's not his job to check on where she's going. And he apparently went back to sleep. Police want to know how he heard a car start, but not his wife being attacked just feet away. Obviously, there was a violent struggle within the bedroom, and uh, Mr. Allen was uh, within shouting distance, hearing distance of the struggle. Mr. Allen had talked about how the incident may have occurred and that struggles can be silent, and that that might be a reason why he didn't hear what had happened. That's another cause for concern for law enforcement when you've got a suspect with a potential explanation for every possible fact. Wondering how the killer escaped in Manu's car, investigators ask where she kept her car keys. Mr. Allen, he indicated that those keys were not kept in the bedroom. They were kept in kind of a common area in the kitchen. When asked why anyone would want to kill his wife, Peter has a theory. During the interview with Mr. Allen, he had indicated that it was well known that he had a large gun collection and he had spoken to a lot of people about it. Mr. Allen was concerned that someone was breaking into the home to steal his gun collection. Police are skeptical as they found no signs of forced entry and were not aware of any stolen items. Well, as a law enforcement officer, I felt that Mr. Allen might be trying to steer the investigation. He had been drinking vodka that day. He was feet away from where the murder had occurred. He was very concerned about things that, in my mind, would not be of importance from somebody that had just lost their wife. So that made him rise to the top as a potential suspect. Detectives believe that before Manu Allen's body was dumped at a nearby lake, she was stabbed to death in her bedroom while three family members were in the house. But her husband, Peter, insists he detected no sign of trouble. Peter Allen, Manu's husband, said that he did not hear this vicious attack that was taking place within feet of where he was sleeping on the couch. Skeptical of Peter's version of events, police want to speak with his children, Darian and Kiara, to see if they witnessed or heard anything. They start with his 15-year-old daughter, Kiara. She said she was out with her boyfriend and that her father uh, let her in the door around 11.30 that evening. Her bedroom is where she went, which was right next door to her mother's room. She had put earbuds in her ears and had a phone call with a friend of hers and uh, fell asleep with those in her ears. Kira said that she never heard any screams or anything that alerted her that something bad was going on in the home. Kira said she woke up that morning and she was trying to get to some clothing that she had washed and the layout of the house would have required her to go through the master bedroom into the utility room, but the door was locked. And she said, uh, Dad, the door's locked, and I'm seeing blood over here. And that woke him up rather quickly. She said he asked her to go around to the other door in the garage and try to get in. But then when she did, she was met with just, the, you know, the scene of the blood in the bedroom and everything else. Kiara did walk through the bedroom, and she did touch some items of evidence. She had picked up the knife that was in the bedroom to examine it. She said that she did not see any blood or anything on it. Of course, picking up any kind of evidence is concerning. It leaves her information on the knife. Investigators next interview Peter and Manu's 20-year-old son, Darian. He said that he arrived back at the house at about 11.45 and then just went up to his bedroom. He said, I was playing a video game pretty much the whole night through. So I had my headphones on. Darian said he had not heard anything other than he heard something in the middle of the night, but he just thought it was his father in the kitchen getting something. According to Darian, he didn't find that unusual, so turned his attention back to his game. There were 
were three family members that were in the house. It was difficult for me personally to believe that they could not know that something serious is going on in, in a bedroom that's within you know 20 feet from you. I, I can't explain that. When you have all these people in the home when this occurred, you have to rule them out individually. Fingerprints and footprints can either rule people out or you can rule somebody in. And unfortunately, it's not like watching a crime TV show where the case is figured out in 15 minutes. It might take months to get returns on some of these items. Peter and Manu's other children, 21-year-old William and 18-year-old Melanie, arrive at the police station anxious for news about their mother. They wouldn't let us see my dad. Probably after like five hours of waiting, they finally let my dad in. And then my dad told us that they found her body. It was a nightmare. At the time of the murder, Melanie Allen, the older daughter, was actually at Six Flags that evening, and they never returned home that night. William Allen, the oldest son, was a student at Tarleton State University, and he was in Stephenville the whole time. Both William and Melanie insist they have no idea who would want their mother dead. I didn't think anyone would have a single thought about hurting my mom. You have to talk to the children, naturally, to see if they can um, give you any idea of other uh, red flags or things that might have been going on in the home. Investigators were concerned about simmering unresolved conflict that may have led to a murder. But when the children were interviewed, uh, none of them ever described seeing uh, Mr. and Ms. Allen having any kind of a noteworthy fight. Police tell the Allen family that they're free to go, but they can't return home until forensics finish processing the house. The next day, there was a lot of evidence that was collected. The investigators took fingerprints, footprints, in addition to the uh, handprints that were on the wall leading back towards the bedroom. Detectives zero in on an interesting detail. It appeared that the perpetrator had left the bedroom and had gone into the kitchen to specifically retrieve something because there were not that many footprints in that kitchen. And the footprints went straight to where the keys to the vehicle were kept. So whoever had done this knew where they kept the keys. 48 hours into the investigation, the autopsy report provides chilling new insights into Manu's last moments. The autopsy revealed that Manu Allen had sustained roughly 47 stab wounds, the majority of which were to her, her head. She did have some defensive wounds on her hands. However, it wasn't the stab wounds that proved fatal. She also had suffered strangulation and a great deal of force had been used, so much so that portions of the neck had been broken. The autopsy report contains one final insight into the killer's brutality. They did find a post-mortem gunshot wound in her facial area. If you look at the totality of what happened with Miss Allen, the stabbings, the choking, and then finally the bullet. We knew we needed to get this suspect caught as soon as possible. Two days after Manu Allen's murder, detectives have learned that in addition to being viciously stabbed and strangled, she was also shot once in the face. There was a post-mortem gunshot fired at the lake after the body was moved to where her final resting spot was. There was a bullet casing that was recovered from that particular area and the actual bullet. Police bring this new evidence to the crime lab, hoping to identify the gun used to shoot Manu. As people in the town of Olney await news of an arrest, rumors start to fly in the close-knit community. There's a group on Facebook called Rants and Raves, and you will hear what ever is on somebody's mind about anything that's going on in town. 
and a lot of people were very hard on the Allen family. It was really tough waiting for answers because other people in the town all wanted to point fingers at my dad. People looked at him differently. They would look at all of us differently. Everybody knows everybody. A lot of accusations started going around. A lot of discussion about Mr. Allen's past, his prior military. Uh, a lot of people felt that uh, Mr. Allen was potentially involved in the homicide of his wife. His children stand by him, but some of Peter's friends doubt his innocence. When I'd heard that Manu had been killed, I'm instantly thinking car wreck or something. So I called Peter's phone. And we hadn't, hadn't spoken in quite a few years. Melanie answered. And I said, Melanie, what's going on over there? She said, well, mom's been murdered. So I told her, I said, I'm on the way. I had some concerns about Peter and uh, his military background. Peter, uh, from time to time, drank hard liquor. I'd never seen him violent, but my thought was maybe something had snapped. Maybe there had been infidelity in the family or something. When I got there, I said, Peter, I need to know now. I need you to look me in the face and tell me, did you have anything to do with this? He looked me square in the face, nose to nose, and says, I had nothing to do with this role. You know I couldn't do it. And it led me to think, who could have done this? It was disturbing. Detectives get a fresh lead when they receive new information on the cyclist seen leaving the area where Manu's body was dumped. The day that um, the body was found, an oil field worker around 6 o'clock in the morning, he saw a person headed from Lake Cooper riding back towards Alney on a bicycle. The local bank had uh, security cameras on the outside of it, and a surveillance video showed somebody riding in town on a bicycle dressed up in shorts with a backpack. The video footage that was received from the bank, it was from a distance, so you were not able to see a face for identification purposes. You could see it was a younger person. It was definitely the person that everybody was wanting to talk to, but we did not know who that person was. The quest to identify the suspicious cyclist hits a dead end, and pressure continues to mount on the police. The community's in a lot of pain. We were kind of in a situation where we can say, hey, we're investigating this, we have leads, we're working on them. Please be patient with us. As police await analysis of the bullet and casing found at Lake Cooper, they call Peter back to the PD and ask him about his gun collection. Peter Allen had told us that he had weapons and ammunition in the house and that they were stored in his bedroom in a closet. Peter tells investigators not all of his guns are locked in the safe. He also keeps a loaded pistol in a dresser drawer. It was a communist bloc pistol that would have been from like the Soviet Union and it was semi-automatic. Police never found this gun when they searched the house. Had the killer stolen it or had Peter staged it to look this way? It felt as if Mr. Allen was trying to lead the investigation, but uh, investigators are naturally going to start looking at other firearm thefts or burglary cases that have occurred in the area. Investigators look into recent gun thefts around town. Corey Taylor was a local kid there that uh, had been in trouble, and it was learned that uh, just before the murders had occurred, he had been involved in a burglary that involved firearm theft. Had Corey entered the house to steal Peter's guns and killed Manu in the process? Mr. Allen had a maybe over 100 firearms in the house, so that became a potential motive for the killing. So we go to Corey Taylor's house. When I got to his apartment, Corey came to the door and told him that I was there so that he could be interviewed about the murder of Miss Allen. Corey indicated that he did know Miss Allen from school. Officers asked Corey for his whereabouts the night of the murder. His alibi was totally void of having any contact with the Allen family residence whatsoever. As Corey speaks, Officers see something suspicious. I noticed a bicycle, and the tire mark from the bicycle looked very, very similar to the tracks at the lake. 
It had the exact tread that was seen out at the lake close to Manu's body and the vehicle. So a red flag went up there. Detectives working the homicide of Manu Allen have noticed a suspicious bike in the apartment of 17-year-old Corey Taylor. Could Corey be the cyclist from the surveillance video? One of our investigators was able to see a bicycle, and he's actually able to take a photograph of the treads on it, and everybody was kind of like, oh, that's probably the bicycle we're looking for. Mr. Taylor denied that it was his, but he can indicate that the bicycle was actually owned by a guy named Julius Mullins. Corey Taylor said that his friend Julius Mullins had dated Manu's daughter, Melanie. Detectives are curious if Corey is trying to deflect blame. They press Corey for more information about his friend, Julius Mullins. Julius was a running back for the Olney football team, and so as far as the community, he was, he was known. Julius Mullins was well-liked by the other team members. He seemed to have some success on the field, but Julius Mullins did not always have the best home life. Julius didn't have a stable home. I know his relationship with his parents were strained. He had stayed with Corey Taylor some, as well as the um, high school gym, because the coaches had allowed him to stay there because he did not always have a, a place to stay. Police learned that Julius knew Manu from school and had dated her daughter, Melanie, for a year. He, he was a good person. My mom was extremely kind and accepting of Julius. She would help him with his homework. One time, he got kicked out of his house, and she let him even stay the night. Despite Manu's love and support, Julius's behavior had changed in recent months. Things just started going downhill. He just started doing worse and worse in school. He started getting in more fights with his parents. Uh, him and I started getting in more fights. And I finally left him probably six, seven months before what happened. Police bring Julius in for an interview and notice some alarming details. Julius Mullins he had some cuts and scrapes on his arms and legs, which would be consistent with someone who had been out by Lake Cooper. There were a great deal of yucca and cactus plants, and you couldn't have gone through that field without getting scratched up by the shrubbery. Mullins had indicated that the night of the murder that he had went to a party with several other people. After the party, he said he went to Corey's apartment and crashed for the evening, but he had not seen Corey that night. So the alibi was pretty weak. Julius Mullins admitted that he owned the bike that was at Corey Taylor's home. The bike places Julius Mullins out at Lake Cooper where the body had been left because those tire tracks match that bike perfectly. So with any murder investigation. The interviewers in these cases are going to press pretty hard to get to the information. Detectives asked Julius for more details about his alibi and the injuries on his arms and legs. As they're finding inconsistencies in the stories, they're going to start breaking these stories down and get him to eventually just tell the truth. He was crying. He was emotional. And Mullins finally admitted that he had killed Miss Allen. At that point, Mullins started giving the information that was pertinent and, and matched what we had found at the scene. Julius tells police he had gained entry to the Allen home through a faulty garage window. Mullins accessed the garage and went into the uh, bedroom of Miss Allen. I believe Miss Allen was surprised uh, when Mullins started the assault. He continued to assault her, and she fought for her life. Mullins stabbed her multiple times and then eventually choked her to death. He then took the sheets off the bed, wrapped her up so that he could move her. 
Police believe Julius then found Peter's Soviet-made pistol in the dresser drawer and headed to the kitchen to grab Manu's car keys. He then drug her through the laundry room, through the garage, through the backyard, out to the alley, and loaded Miss Allen into the car. He loaded his bicycle into the car with him, and he drove her to the lake. Julius planned to hide the body far from the road, but the vehicle got stuck on the rough terrain. So he put together a hasty plan and pulled her out and drug her to a fence. He then took the gun and fired one shot, hitting her in the face to ensure that she was dead. And then he took his bike and he fled the scene. It was a sigh of relief in some respects that he confessed. Mullins did indicate that he was still in love with Melanie and was upset about that. We asked him why he would want to kill uh, the woman he loves, mother. And Mullins said that, that he had a, a gun to his head. According to Mullins, on the evening before the murders had occurred, he said that he had gone to Alsop's and had run into Peter Allen in the store. And Peter had him come outside into to Peter's car. And Peter had pulled a gun on him and pressed it to his chest and told him to kill Miss Allen and that if he did not do it, that his whole family would be killed. He said that was the reason for committing the murder. Julius Mullins has confessed to the murder of Manu Allen, but claims that he was forced into it by her husband, Peter. Mr. Mullins gave very specific information about them meeting at a, an Allsup's convenience store where Mullins said Mr. Allen pretty much just uh, pulled him into his car and said, hey, you're going to do this. Otherwise, I'm going to go kill all your family. When Mullins made these accusations toward Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen was still a person of interest. Police try to verify the alleged meeting between Julius and Peter. We were able to secure the phone records of Julius Mullins back to the day that uh, Mr. Allen supposedly threatened Julius into murdering his wife and were able to determine that Mr. Mullins' phone was nowhere near that Ossip's location at any time that day. Police interviewed Julius again to clarify his allegations against Peter. He insists he's telling the truth and provides more shocking details about the murder. He said that after Miss Allen was dead, that Peter assisted him in wrapping the body and pulling her out to the alleyway and then loaded her into the car. Detectives receive forensic results and check if Julius's account matches the evidence. There were some bloody handprints and some fingerprints, and they had footprints that they had sent to the crime lab, and they were eventually identified. Forensic testing determined two people had left footprints in the kitchen. One set was left by Julius. Julius had been in the home uh, frequently when he was dating Melanie, and the footprints went straight to where the keys to the vehicle were kept in the kitchen, and Julius would know that. Investigators wonder if the other prints belong to Peter, but the results show otherwise. Kiara left footprints, but she said that she had stepped in the blood, so that lined up with what she had said had occurred. The crime lab also determines fingerprints left in Manu's blood in the house and on her car belong to one person. Sure enough, they belong to Julius Mullins. We were able to rule Peter Allen out. The things that Mullins attempted to implicate Peter in, the physical evidence did not support that. The cell phone data did not support that. The results were confirmation that Mr. Allen had nothing to do with this. A.B. Mark. Manu was my life. She was my soulmate. And I don't think any human being alive could expect for the heart, the soul, the core of the family to be murdered um, without reason whatsoever. I knew they were going to look at me because I was a husband and I was in the house. When the police made the arrest, 
there was disbelief. I just didn't think he had it in him to do something like that. On July 15th, 2019, 18-year-old Julius Mullins is charged with the murder of Manu Allen. My daughter Melanie dated him, and uh, Julius would come over. My wife was very kind to Julius, but we were both nice to him. I was not worried about Julius at all while they were dating. He seemed more like a pleasant young man. With Julius in custody, police find Peter's stolen pistol at the home of Corey Taylor. They did investigate Corey Taylor, but he was ruled out. No fingerprints, no footprints, no DNA, nothing. The sole perpetrator of the crime was Julius Mullins. Police believe the knife found at the scene may have been dropped by Julius, but forensic analysis found it was not used in the murder. Staff at the school had found Mullins' backpack with a knife that was eventually determined to have been involved in the murder of Miss Allen. Tragically, no one in the house heard Julius's vicious attack on Manu. Here I put earbuds in her ears and fell asleep with those in her ears. Darian was upstairs playing video games with a headset on, and then Mr. Allen he had, had consumed alcohol, and that might have contributed to him sleeping heavier than uh, normal. Julius Mullins was charged ultimately and pled to murder in the first degree. And he also pled to the abuse of a corpse. Julius receives a 55-year prison sentence. I can't even fathom what goes through someone's mind when they do something like this, especially to someone who has been so kind to them. I was totally shocked that it was a person that had been trusted in their home. Uh, it was a person that Manu had assisted with tutoring and personal family issues that were going on with him. Was robbery the motive? Was revenge the motive? I don't think we'll ever know um, unless Mullins decides to tell us why he did what he did. The only thing I can think of is he felt that if he killed Melanie's mother, that it would break her heart. A twisted revenge is the only thing I can think of. It, it tore me apart. And my dad was, of course, completely torn apart. You know, they were supposed to spend the rest of their lives together. I love to smile, I love to laugh, I love to make jokes, but I haven't laughed or smiled like I did with her and, since it happened. There are generally two types of love. The one type is where you've been with somebody for a very long time, so you got that deep love. And then you got the other kind of love, which is the infatuation type love. And I had both of those for my wife. There is no such thing as moving on from it. I'm making progress, and my kids are making progress, but I'll never move on. That day will be stuck in my head till the day I die. I wanted to grow up to be just like my mom because I saw that she was a strong, kind woman that helped everyone she could, and she was nice to everyone, no matter who they were. I miss how she was always pushing me to do my best. I really miss her support.